Okay, you made it. I know that was a, a long gospel, long time to be standing. It's the prodigal son, what can you do? I don't want to give you the short version if I can possibly help it. But I'm going to keep the homily short to make it up to you. So for the prodigal son, the first thing uh, is something that you've probably heard before. I've preached about this myself at least once in the past. Uh, the estate that the father has, uh, that's heaven. That represents heaven in the story of the prodigal son. So in essence, the story is about a guy, the prodigal son, starting in heaven, choosing a life of sin and leaving heaven, hitting rock bottom, and then realizing what he lost, and then returning to heaven. That is a highly realistic story, in my opinion. Someone leaving heaven for sin, recanting, and then going back. And the reason I say it's, it's realistic is, is this. Um, the idea, the ridiculous idea that the prodigal son gets in his head is that he will be happier and better off away from heaven. So if you know your faith inside and out, and if your faith is rock solid, then you know that that is an inherently foolish decision to make because there cannot be anything that is better than heaven, okay? That is clear if you understand even like the basic idea of what heaven is in the first place. So people who are essentially, I, I hesitate to use the word perfect. I know no one's perfect. But for people who are so in love with Jesus, they know that the prodigal son has made a very, very poor choice. But the story is realistic for the rest of us, myself included, because that's what sin does. Sin tempts us and draws us away from God. It makes promises that it cannot that it cannot fulfill. Most sin carries with it the promise that this thing that we want is going to delight us and fulfill us, make us happier, more important, uh, 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 more famous, more respected as people. So much sin comes with that promise that this is a good thing, but that's a promise it doesn't fulfill. At best, sin offers us a temporary high, and when that high has passed, we end up being farther from happiness and fulfillment than we were before. So in that way, I say most of us, the vast majority of us, are in fact like the prodigal son. We foolishly choose sins over that which will actually fulfill us and make us whole and, and all of the good stuff that we really crave, that is the path to heaven. And when we don't choose that path, when we choose sin as an alternative, it's because we've been fooled by that series of temptations. And when that happens, we need to be like the prodigal son. We need to have the humility to recognize our mistake and to return to our Heavenly Father. That is the solution. So in terms of a, of a real life example, you know, I always try to give you a real life comparison whenever possible. And uh, today, I'm gonna pick on those of you that have a terrible sin on your shoulders that, in, that affects me in no way. This is a sin that has no bearing on my soul whatsoever. I'm talking about the sin of diet soda. 
can't stand diet soda. I'm sorry, never liked it. I feel like it's chemicals with bubbles. When you're in the drive through line and you just want something that tastes good and that goes well with a Big Mac, you're gonna get Diet Coke or whatever. I get that, but see, you know, that's the temptation. You want that, that, that quick high is what you really want. And even those of you who are not nutritionists or, or <laughs> medical professionals, you know that Diet Coke is bad for you. Like diet soda is chemicals. Generally speaking, you will not be healthier for drinking that. And by comparison, being the prodigal son and trying to return to heaven, you know, the humility of recognizing what you really need, I want you to imagine something that happens to me all the time. You get home late at night. You're getting ready for bed. Um, you haven't drunk too much uh, during that day. Maybe you had a lot of salty food. But you get home. You have time to yourself. You have time to appreciate, you know, what goes in your mouth. And you are so thirsty. It's not your fault. You are so thirsty. And you pour yourself a glass of water, of tap water or a plain bottle of water you know in that situation when you put you know that bottle to your lips and that that sensation of pure hydrating water is so rejuvenating and you're like wow why does water taste so good <laughs> it's because it's a pleasure that's not based on a temporary high but something that is fueling you and sustaining you. In a tiny, tiny analogous way, that's the difference between a holy um, God-infused pleasure and the temporary high that sin offers us. We all give in to that temporary high of sin but we have to have the humility to recognize it for what it is and return to our Lord.